So I built a really awesome water-cooled gaming PC for $2,500. And in this video, I'm gonna do a little build guide to show you how you can do the same. So let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy my content, smash that like button, leave a comment below. I wanna know if you're planning a build and what your budget is. I'm gonna do a build guide on the hardware that I chose and how I put together this $2,500 water-cooled gaming PC. I'm gonna tell you all the specs, then I'm gonna tell you what else may work to make a really sick gaming PC for this amount. The $2,000 to the $2,500 range is absolutely perfect for a gaming PC. You can fit some really powerful hardware in there without having to go too crazy on the price. Now, the reason I want to share this build with you guys as a build guide is that I found that it performs amazingly well. When you're playing games or even doing like content creation, it's extremely quiet and ultra powerful. Like the cooling performance is absolutely insane because this build has a couple of special elements that really make it stand out compared to other builds. So now I'm going to take you guys on a little tour of the system. You see right back here, this is the Gigabyte motherboard and the Corsair CPU block on that 30. 800X with that 3600 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of HyperX RGB RAM. I really like this RAM. It's actually fairly low profile. Even though here you see you have a lot of space, you can easily fit something big like the Corsair Dominator RAM or something like that. You have a lot of space, lateral space, as well as the vertical space here. Um, up here, you can see I have the radiator. Now the fans aren't on the bottom. I chose to put the fans right up here on the top of the case because you have these little ventilation holes here. The top is glass, but over here it's ventilated. So that way you have good airflow. Um, the front of the case, as you can see here, is gonna be completely mesh. So this mesh here is actually very permeable. So all of the air coming in through the front of the case is going right through the radiator, through the case, and back out of the exhaust fan. Now here, all of these components are Corsair in terms of the water cooling. You have the GPU block. Um, this is the 2080 block, which actually works on the 2080 Super um, because they have the same PCB design, so it worked without a problem. You have here the Corsair D5 pump and reservoir combo. It's actually priced really well for what it is. Um, generally, these would be even 40 to 50 bucks more. Um, here you have, of course, the Corsair CPU block. And then throughout the case, I have Corsair fans. Of course, the two fans on the front are a 200 millimeter. Um, these are gonna be uh, the Cooler Master fans, the ARGB 200 millimeter fans. I just like the RGB, that's why I put the LL fan here. Um, it's not as good in terms of static pressure as the ML fans, but in this case, I just needed to move a little bit of that warm air out of the case. On top, we have the Corsair ML120. Now, if we go down here, this is gonna be that Asus Thor power supply. Um, basically, you see how there's a little cutout here for the, um, you know, in the case in the power supply area. You have a little OLED panel that's gonna tell you the watts that your system is using. So even though this isn't necessarily the most useful thing in the world, it is nice to know that you're under your, your limit of your power supply. It looks really awesome, and I think it just adds to the cool aesthetic of this build. Because let's be honest, this case is really made to display a really cool water cooling build. Not many cases have 200 millimeter fans, especially that are addressable RGB, so that's extremely unique. And then of course you have a vertical GPU. Now there's no bracket, this is mounted directly to the case. The case already has like a slot for a vertical GPU, so it was extremely easy to integrate it. And then of course I just have a PCIe riser that I got on Amazon. And then here you do have space for an SSD as well as in the back. And then the back you have a couple of options to really close out your um, cable management. It can get a little bit tight in there, so try to keep everything to a minimum. I mean, having RGB fans, you're gonna have more cables regardless, but I think the look is worth it. And and then here you see that Gigabyte Aorus uh, 4.0 PCIe M.2 um, hard drive. It has a heat sink on it. You know, it does get pretty warm. Like when you touch it, it's definitely pretty hot, but the performance is staggeringly good. That's a one terabyte. Like I said, a one terabyte is fantastic because I have my operating system on here as well as a bunch of games. You don't have to have uh, you know more cables for a separate hard drive. And I think the price has gone down on these one terabyte M.2 drives enough that it makes sense to be able to have one in your system. So the first First thing we're going to talk about is the case itself. 
Now, this case is vital for this build because it's the Cooler Master H500M and it has insane airflow. On the front of the case, you're gonna get included two 200 millimeter fans. Now, most fans are 120 millimeter, sometimes 140, 200 is really rare, and basically these are gonna push so much air through your case that you're not gonna have any problems with airflow at all. The more airflow you can get through your case, the quieter it's gonna be. The bigger fans, it's quieter. I know it seems a little weird, but if a fan is really big, that means that it can spin a lot slower in order to push the same amount of air out. If a fan is small, it's gonna to have to spin really fast and loudly in order to be able to generate an equal amount of air. Now, there are other cases you can substitute for this, like maybe the Fractal Design Meshify series, but I feel like this case has an absolutely amazing amount of airflow, plus it looks really sweet as well. You still get tempered glass, but the front is a mesh panel, which is vital for the airflow of this case. Now, the next important vital part of this build is gonna be the motherboard and the processor. That's gonna determine everything else that you do. We're gonna be going with the AMD Ryzen 3000 series. Now, this is the absolute best bang for the buck you're gonna get nowadays in terms of gaming performance and multi-threaded performance. So this is gonna be your sweet spot for this build. Now, I have a 3800X here, which I was able to get on sale. It was a pretty good price. Generally, I would recommend a 3700X, and you can go ahead and substitute that in here if there's a big enough price difference. The 3800X is basically the same thing. It's just a little bit better binned. If you find the 3700X for a better price, go ahead and get that. It's gonna be an eight core monster regardless. For the motherboard, we're using the Gigabyte Master. Now, Gigabyte has greatly improved their motherboard design as well as their BIOS systems across Intel and AMD the last few years. So I'm very happy with the performance and the VRM performance of this motherboard. Plus, it's a pretty fair price. As you guys know, the X570 motherboards jumped up in price. And to complement this gaming PC, we're gonna do 16 gigabytes of HyperX RGB RAM at 3600 megahertz. Now, Ryzen just seems to work better at 3600 megahertz. It's really the sweet spot. So I recommend you guys stay with those specs, 16 gigabytes and 3600 megahertz. That's gonna be an amazing combination for gaming while not really breaking the bank. You could do 32 gigs if you're really gonna do content creation, but otherwise for a gaming system, I would stick with 16 gigabytes. And of course, the 3600 megahertz. Now, I chose the HyperX memory here but you could also get something like the Trident Z Neo which is optimized for Ryzen or maybe even the Corsair Dominator RGB. For the hard drive we're going to be using the PCIe fourth generation M.2 hard drive. It goes perfectly in this motherboard. It gets to take advantage of the much faster read and write speeds. I mean the performance is insane here. One terabyte I find is a really ideal size because not only can you have your Windows operating system on there, you could also have a lot of games on there. Of course you could do a smaller you know operating system boot drive and then have a separate SSD for your game library but I feel like the one terabyte SSD drives, especially these M.2 two that came out recently have dropped in price enough that you could actually fit one of these in your build without breaking the bank and you can fit most of your games and stuff on there. I think it's a good proposition. Now for the next item that we're going to talk about, it's going to be the GPU. And here we chose a 2080 Super. I think the 2080 Super is the absolute sweet spot for sort of a high-end system that's not gonna break the bank. A 2080 Ti, of course it's gonna be better performance, but it's like four or $500 more. And in most gaming situations, you're not really even gonna feel that difference. So save your money, get the 2080 Super. You could always get a 2070 Super for a little bit less performance too if your budget is really close. But the 2080 Super is what we used here. And this is the Nvidia Founders Edition which of course we took off the stock cooler and we put on a water block. Now for the power supply, you could technically get a little bit cheaper power supply, maybe something like an EVGA G3, um, you know, 850 watt power supply or something around there should be more than fine. In this case, I chose to use the Asus Thor power supply for a very specific reason. Now this power supply has an OLED display on the side and it just so happens that this case has the power supply area open. So that means that you can peek right in there and see that OLED display. And I was just waiting for a case where I could utilize this power supply because it looks absolutely insane. You have your little OLED screen telling you the wattage that the system is using. And I think it really adds to the unique character of this build. Before we get to the actual water cooling parts, 
let's talk about the fans in this case. Now it's going to come with two 200 millimeter fans already. They're going to be ARGB, so you can hook them up to your motherboard and be able to control them. Um, you know, they're, they're good fans. They're not the best like Noctua or anything like that. And now for the other fans in the system, in the back, I'm using this Corsair 120 millimeter LL fan. This one's basically just here just to help with the airflow from the front to the back of the case, just use, being used as an exhaust fan. And on the top, on the radiator, I'm using three Corsair ML120 fans. Now, this was the ones that you can get in a pack of two. Um, they're gray as opposed to the black version. They're a little bit cheaper. Usually, the pack of two is between $27 to $35 for two fans. So, I think that's a pretty decent price because these perform amazingly well. They're very, very quiet because they're magnetic levitation fans. And they push tons of air through. So, they're fantastic when you want to keep your build quiet but performing at a high rate. And now let's talk about some of the water cooling gear. Now this is where you could technically slap an AIO on there and just leave your GPU air cooled and you'd be done with the build and you would even come in a little bit cheaper. But in this case I feel like water cooling works tremendously well because I am shocked at how good the performance is. So now this is a nice water cooling case and I was able to fit two 360 millimeter radiators. A nice thick one on the front and then another one on the top. Now generally I use a lot of EK water blocks water cooling but Corsair you know fairly recently they came out with their own line of water cooling gear now I really enjoyed working with this uh, Corsair water cooling gear thermally everything performed very well um, I, th I think aesthetically it does look really good I like the way that GPU block looks with the flow sensor in there the CPU block looks nice it's you know very easy to work with and put on I really like the D5 uh, pump and reservoir combo I think the way that you mount it it helps with a lot of vibrations and I like the way that it looks since these are Corsair products, you know, the RGB effects are really, really good and nicely designed. Everything integrates with the IQ system, so that's really, really awesome. And here, if you want some alternatives, of course, you can use EK Water Blocks or even Bits Power. Um, most of these components are going to give you very comparable performance. I just chose to go with Corsair here because I wanted a nice, uniform look. I wanted to try out their new hardware, and I'm pleased that I did because both the performance and the aesthetics have been fantastic. And now that you know all of the parts, what are some good ways to optimize this build to make sure you're taking full advantage of it? Well, the first way is going to be to use a fan controller. Now, the motherboard also has different fan headers and you can control it, but generally I don't really like the motherboard because it doesn't give you as much of a granular control system. Um, I really like Aqua Computer, Aqua Aero components, or in this case, since we're using a lot of Corsair products, we're going to be using their IQ software with the Commander Pro. That way we can connect all of our RGB be on there as well as our fans and our pump. Now generally in there you could put your D5 pump on quiet mode and it's only going to ramp up when you're doing a lot of really intensive stuff and not even too loud. Um, you could even set your pump to a specific RPM so that's really up to you. You can test the noise that you're comfortable with compared to the performance. Since this case has such amazing airflow you really don't need to be running things too high. You can run the fans especially the Corsair fans. I like to run them between like five to six RPM. That's very low. You're still going to get good cooling performance and you can have them gradually ramp up as everything in your case heats up. Now even when I'm maxed out playing a game, you know you don't really hear the system too much. You may hear just a faint little noise from the D5 pump and a little bit of the fans. The GPU under these quiet moderate settings, even when I'm playing a game on full blast, I'll get somewhere between 45C to 49C. The room ambient is usually around 23C. Um, so that's really really good performance. Of course if this GPU didn't have a water block on it, it would reach all the way up to like 73 or 74C. So to be getting in that mid 40 range is pretty impressive and likewise the CPU also generally stays very very cool somewhere in that 40 to upper 50 C range even when you're doing games um, of course if you stress it with something like Cinebench or even Prime 95 you can definitely get it a little bit over 60 especially if you're not running all the components at 100% like your fans and your pump but generally under gaming the performance is fantastic and you're well below any type of heat threshold for the performance of of the CPU. So you're going to be getting max performance and that's going to give you a little bit of room to overclock. 
Now for the fittings, that's the only thing that I didn't use the Corsair water cooling components. I had some of these EK fittings and their tubing lying around. So I decided to use these. I really like the EK fittings. They're easy to use. Um, they look really good. And it's always a very secure fit. For this particular build, I wanted to do the soft tube just so I'd have a little more accessibility in terms of upgrading it and moving things around. Um, hard tube looks amazing, but when it's in place, you can't really move anything that easily without draining it. So in this case, I did soft tube. Um, you can see I put a nice drain valve right on the pump. Um, generally, the best practice is to put your draining port somewhere on the lowest point of your loop. Now, I couldn't really get to that front radiator, even though it does go a little bit lower just because there's no access there and it's a little bit harder. So I decided to put this on the pump, which at least it's going to help get a lot of that liquid out. The radiators that I'm using in this build are a mix of a Corsair on the front and I had an EK360 PE Performance Edition radiator that I put on the top of the case. Now you can mix and match your radiators. You can fit two nicely sized 360 millimeter radiators. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. I want to know if you're going to build something similar or what type of build you have in mind. And I am going to do more of these build videos with a a bunch of different budgets. I just started around this $2,500 mark, but I'm going to do cheaper budgets as well as a few more expensive ones, some in the middle, so that way it's going to be something for everybody. So I'll see you guys on the next video.